Today we're going to do, be doing uh, fuel lines, our part number FL FG0053. Uh, pretty much fits 99 through 03 Silverado Sierra uh, vehicles, 4.8 liter, 5.3 liter, 6 liter, and 8 liter. Uh, does not include uh, flex fuel vehicles. Uh, so this is a pretty simple system. We're going to go over the parts that come with, with the set and then uh, be installing it. Um, starting at the tank, we have uh, new fittings that will go into the nylon lines coming off the tank. Um, we have uh, a, a, a third fitting there. We'll sh tell you what that's about in a minute. Um, zip ties, new quick connect fuel filter. We do away with the uh, threaded fuel filters because uh, you know most states uh, with rust problems, those threaded fuel filters end up um, uh, rusting together. You can't get them apart. So with this quick connect filter, it makes uh, filter changes a lot easier. So uh, the system starts out with uh, new quick connects for the nylon lines coming off the tank because usually the metal lines are rusted in, into these lines and we have directions of how to show you how to put those in. Plus we have other videos of how to put those in. It's fairly easy. Uh, we've got the short piece of line that comes from in front of the tank to the filter. That's gonna pretty much go like that. The filter is going to go right in its original location. Then we have the main line that's going to run from the, the front of the filter to the motor. Return line from in front of the tank to the motor. And then the vent line, which runs from the uh, charcoal canister to, uh, to the motor. Um, comes with instructions on how to do it step by step along with uh, step-by-step -step instructions on how to uh, push the quick connects in and stuff which you'll be seeing that too fairly simple job um, we can usually do these in, in about an hour to hour and a half here the four-wheel drive ones are a little bit harder to do because it's a little bit harder to get up on top of the uh, transmission uh, but we'll show you some shortcuts for that so let's get started Okay, so your, your typical 99 to 04 uh, Chevy truck, GMC truck, it's gonna have a plastic gas tank. Um, it's gonna have a main line with a filter. Um, pretty much anything newer than that doesn't, doesn't have a filter. It just has a, has a main line with no return line. So we've got the main line with the filter, we've got a return line, and we've got the vent line that goes right into the charcoal canister here. Um, our connections are gonna be made these plastic lines, which you can't really see all that well, right on front there. Uh, sometimes it's it's easier if you do take this charcoal canister off, especially on the standard cab one, so you give, give you a little bit more room to work. But you can get back in there and kind of pull those out. Usually they're so rusted, you can just, uh, you know, here's an old brake line right here. Um, you can get at them without having to take this off on the, on the non-standard uh, cab. Um, so we're going to be taking this out here, um, it makes the crossover up above the transmission. As you can see, this one's four wheel drive. So it's a little bit tighter in here. Generally these, these ones that go up above the transmission, we leave them, we will leave in place. We'll, we'll cut them like somewhere back in here. It's, it's pretty difficult to get up on top of that transmission and, and get them all loose. So we'll generally leave those up in place when we run them. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these lines loose and uh, get it prepped. We'll show you how we put the new quick connects in coming off the tank and uh, go from there. All right, so now we're gonna replace those quick connects at the, at the front of the tank. You got, you got a 3 8 one right there that has a yellow mark on it. And the return line 5 16 has a white mark. So what we're gonna do now He's, he got he has those lines pulled out uh, from behind the canister and you don't want to just go cutting those quick connects off willy-nilly as, as per the instructions you want to make your cut near the right at the end of that barb so you're gonna actually and you'll see here in a minute we're gonna actually leave a piece of that barb in there and the reason for that is it, it kind of has it so you're uh, your line that has a little bit of a swag to it so it's easier to start the new quick connect. So you 
he's leaving just a little bit of that barb in there. Now he's going to go put his uh, um, line tool on that, and this is a, a line tool that you'd use for like flaring brake lines. So now he, he's putting the uh, line tool on there. That's the typical line tool you'd use for flaring brake lines. And the purpose of that is, is, is just helps to hold the line in place while you're working on it and pushing in the quick connect. So you can see there's just a little bit of the barb still left in there. And uh, use a pair of needle nose, he's gonna pull that out, okay? Now he's gonna take um, an, another needle nose and uh, kind of swag it open a little bit more, or stretch it out a little bit more. And then he'll take the quick connect, put a little bit of grease on the quick, on the quick connect barb. And that's the return line he's putting in right now and just push it in. There's no clamps that go on these. In fact, if you put clamps on it, it's gonna end up leaking. And that's pretty much how those quick connects go in. So we're gonna repeat that with, with the main line. And being two different sizes, you know, there's no way you can mess them up. They're two different sizes. That line coming off the tank is actually 10 millimeter line. So it's a little bit bigger than the other stuff, the steel line that's going forward. Pull off the last of that barb. Open it up. Got a lubed up quick connect there. There you go. So now it, it's going to get put back in its place. Yep. All right. So now we have have the fuel lines up in place up at the tank. He's, he's going to hook up the short main line that goes from the, the tank to the filter. Put it in. You should hear it click. And it's going to go to the back of the uh, GF580. Uh, quick connect filter. All right. So now we're going to route uh, all three lines to the front. Uh, this, the ends that you use on the main line, the return line, have the loom on it, and then the vent line has a short section of hose on it. So now we're going to route it pretty much the, the same path that the old ones were going. It just gets them uh, started up and in, up into the engine bay and then we're gonna lower the hoist down and do what needs to be done up at the top there okay now we're uh, we're gonna disconnect the uh, original lines from the from the motor, you're gonna need uh, a 3 8 and a 5 16 uh, fuel line disconnect tool. Um, so yeah, two different sizes. So just kind of work that in there, pull it loose. That's the main line. back 
and do the return line. Like I said, we usually leave the lines up on up on top of the transmission, especially on these four wheel drives, because it, it's just it's very difficult to get up in there and, and get everything loose. So we'll be wire tying the, the new nylon lines to the old one. So we're just cutting this back. And he's gonna route the um, nylon lines up into those same areas and then connect them in. We got the return line first. the vent line. So this is the this is the valve where that goes into. We're gonna be making a cut. There's a there's a test port, a green cap test port. You want to cut behind that green cap test port, uh, that nylon, and then he's gonna take his knife and cut that nylon off the barb and that's where the hose is going to hook into. It has the clamps attached right to it. All right, so this one this one doesn't have a barb on that test port, so we're going to just slide it right on over the, the old nylon and then uh, take a take a pair of us uh, you can take a pair of side cutters and and just gently squeeze that and uh, have it connected up. And make sure you, you, there at the firewall, you route that down. And farther down at the end of the uh, front of the cab, there is a sharp edge there that you wanna make sure that your lines are not hard against the sharp edge down at the bottom. So we're pretty much done here in the engine compartment. We're gonna go back and route the lines back to the filter and back to the tank, get them in uh, the brackets and wire tie them up the rest of the way. Okay, so we got our lines routed from the, the motor back along the top of the transmission. Uh, this is that sharp edge you gotta watch out for, make sure you're not up against that. So we got that wire tied up on top of the transmission. It's coming back here going into the, the old plastic holder right here, down below the ABS. And part of the problem is here too, we got a whole conglomeration of old line, old brake lines and, and new brake lines here. So uh, it, it's, it's, you got that to contend with, which generally you get these trucks in here that are this old, they've already had brake lines done. So he's got it routed back to here to the, to the filter and he's gonna connect the main line to the front of the filter you have that quick connect that's tagged, splice in at filter location. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and cut the main line, push that quick connect in, and then connect the return line to the tank and the vent line to the charcoal canister. Okay, now we have our, we have our return line ran to the front of the tank. We have the, the vent line run to the charcoal canister and we're gonna cut the uh, main line. He's gonna put that last quick connect in that had the tag on it. So the reason that, the reason that we gotta put this quick connect in and put the compression fitting on the uh, return line is we, we have one part number for all wheel bases. Um, so, you know, that way, you know, if you're a garage, you wanna stock these, you don't have to stock six different uh, part numbers to cover all the all the different wheel bases. Uh, so that's the reason that you do have to finish off this main line and uh, do a compression fitting on the return line. Is so you know you don't have to try to guess or whatever what wheel base you have. Um, you know this one set will fit all wheel bases. That's going to go on to the front side of that filter. Now we're going to cut the excess out of the turn line and use the compression fitting that is made for nylon and the unique thing about these compression fittings most people have never seen them but the compression fittings have the show, show them how it has a has a ferrule built right into the compression fitting so it's not a loose ferrule um, 
so you don't have to worry about a ferrule falling on the floor and losing it. It's built right into the nut. And those those compression fittings are they're made for both nylon and, and steel. Tighten that up. And you just need to take it, you know, like about a quarter turn or so, half a turn past snug. It doesn't have to be wrenched down at 150 pounds of torque. Just, uh, you know, like about a half a turn past snug. All right, so now at this point, you're gonna go through, make sure you don't have any lines up against uh, sharp objects. You got it away from any exhaust. Um, cut the ends of any of your wire ties that you have and then uh, start it up and you want to uh, check for leaks and you're done. Just focus on that. So the set of lines that we put on today, you know, uh, it, it covers the 4.8 liters, the 5.3, 6 liters, and 8 liters. It, it does not cover the 4.3 liter because those have threaded connections at the motor. So that's, that's a different set. We do carry those also. But if you're interested in any of the fuel lines, we, we have about uh, 60 different part numbers, all nylon fuel lines. It's stuff that we install here every day. Um, over the last 15, 20 years that we've been making and selling nylon fuel lines, we have literally gone through hundreds of miles of nylon in the, those years and very, very few problems. So if, there's two ways to order it. You can uh, order it off our website. Is usually the easiest thing. GasTankRenew.net is our website. We also have them on eBay. Um, I would say, um, you know, ours are probably uh, a little bit more expensive. Uh, seems like every fuel line that we have that becomes successful, the Chinese uh, copy it. And the thing with the Chinese ones is it's kind of crappy quick connects and there's no instructions to it or anything like that. And more importantly, there's nobody to call if you have a problem. We even have an after hours number. So, um, you know, you're gonna pay a little bit more when you buy it from us, but you're gonna get some stuff that's used by us all the time. Thanks for watching.